Welcome to Breaking Initiative. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Also, we are on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, and Spotify. My name is Brett. And I'm Rob. This is the show where we break down our own tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your tabletop games. Uh, we share some of our favorite tools from around the community, uh, discuss some of our uh, past experiences, as well as current things going on with the hobby. And I happen to have a very special announcement uh, f for you, and uh, I think for Brett as well. He doesn't know about this. I never do. Yeah. Uh, so, we have a special contest going on right now. Uh, the first, uh, as soon as, uh, wh whoever's the 100th person to like one of our videos uh, gets a special prize. Brett will come and visit you and have dinner with you. The great thing is the relief of the fact that um, we don't even get that many views. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to dig up this video and they're going to hold you <laughs> to just, that. And just send it out. And then it'd be like, false average. What? He never showed up. The dude never showed up, man. The guy <laughs> called it out and he just never showed up. What the heck, dude? These guys are fake. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, hey, I didn't know about that. And you know what? <laughs> if you live close by... <laughs> That's a relative term. <laughs> That's relative. <laughs> what is close by? I don't know. We're not telling you where we live. Nope. And guess not, maybe. Not happen. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. It didn't not happen yet. So it's a possibility. Brett, what are we you doing want today? That or not? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what are Anyways. we going to talk about today? Oh gosh. Um, all right. So we. Um, we are going to talk about creating characters, my friend. We are you. You get the options in the app. It's like ah, point by standard array manual. I don't know what that means. Um, and, or you just go ahead through it and you're like, it. what's the best one? You know, we want to figure out what the best one is. And so me and Rob, we're going to give you some examples. I think we have some opinions of how we do things. Anyways, the reason why I do what I do, is, I don't know. It just sounds like fun. Don't know how the results are. Rob has been playing this much longer than me, so he's like, I got this thing down on, this is why I do what I do, Brett. Well, like, okay, 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 okay. Well, um, I, I will admit that I've been playing so long that I've been, I was playing back in the days uh, when it was done the boring and terrible way, which nobody will ever do ever again, unless they're trying to do it because it's funny for a one shot. And that What's was- What's the boring and terrible way? <laughs> um, so, there's a reason that goes strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma every single time, and you never you never switch up that order unless you're playing fourth edition, which you wouldn't be doing anyway because that's terrible. And the reason for that is <laughs> because um, that's Perkins. the order you would literally roll them. You would literally roll three dice, and then that was your strength. And then you roll three dice, and that was your dexterity. Then you roll three dice, and that's your constitution. Over and over until in that specific order. And then, like, so that would be your first step when making a character. And then what you'd do is you would look at that and say, all right, so this would basically only be a viable character for ooh, Rogue. And then uh, you're a Rogue. You don't get to pick what you want it to be. You could pick. You might just yeah. be picking the wrong thing. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. maybe, maybe it's like you're going to be a paladin. It's like, well, only humans can be paladins. Sorry, buddy. That was a weird... It was very restrictive compared. It's almost hilarious how restrictive it was compared to, to modern yeah. times. But uh -huh. but now, if you go into the player's handbook, it says, uh, pick your race first, then you pick your um, then you pick your class, and then you yeah. roll. I think that's the order it tells you to do it in. I believe so. That's I the that a... sounds like the logical way. I'm actually got it up here. Yes, that is correct. Race, race, race class, class ability. Then roll your stats. So you yeah. actually get to play the thing you want to play, which for a campaign that will last probably years if you're lucky. So right. <laughs> you're not stuck yeah. with a rogue and you hate rogues because you happen to roll the right stats for a rogue. I mean, sometimes you roll hate rogue. in that, that old way and it'd be like, this isn't viable for anything. Like, I literally can't be anything. I've just got to... What do you do? Your, your DM, if they had mercy on you, they would just say, man, just, just make another character. Just start yeah. over. you got to scrap all those roles. It's not pick your favorite pool of roles. Just start over. But there are three ways that you can do it. And I think that's an easy way we can break up this video. I'd like to... Maybe we can just discuss that and um, sort of uh, make, make characters live, I think is what we're going to do, right? Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I, I got a, I got like basically most of the way through up until the ability scores uh, of a of a character that I have on D and D Beyond, just to just to kind of see, just kind of uh, see how it all turns out, you know. Makes it um, so easy doing it on D and D Beyond. All right, so boom, yes. boom, I'm gonna catch up to you in just Thank a few you, seconds. Thank you, <laughs> Okay, so um, so we are gonna start by doing um, the standard array. So I uh, I basically started creating a character. I honestly actually created a rogue. Um, and what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna put in the stats with standard array, and then basically, we would like to keep track of even, cause point by gives you the 27 points, which you guys have all looked at. I know this is gonna get kind of scientifically, or it's like numbery in this. So, so sorry, but also if you're a brand new player and you're super jacked up to play, you're probably like, yes, give me the numbers. Pokemon Go, man, not to break, but the IV numbers in the very beginning, I got all into like watching oh, the numbers okay. and trying to get in the best guys. I got out, of, oh my gosh, I got crazy. Anyways, but d d it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so. Odd comparison. Right. What? Odd comparison, the Venn diagram between those two games is complicated math from the get go. It, it, it is, it is. And and that's not real, by the way, them not going anywhere. All right, so standard array, uh, Rob, how do you want to do this? Standard array. Standard array, right. So um, I would say this is my favorite thing to tell new players to do, just to give a little preface. And just to preface it for anybody that doesn't know, when we say standard array, that means that you get six numbers, and you get to just put those six numbers in any order you want. And those numbers are 15, 14, 13, 12, 10 and 8, yes. which uh, all balances out to um, one average stat, one negative stat, um, and then uh, four um, positive stats with one of them being a plus three, uh, two of them being a plus, no, one of them being a plus three, two of them being a plus two, and one of them being a plus one. Right. Well, the fifteen. Right? I mean, if you put the fifteen yeah. where one of your bo racial bonuses are, right, 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 right. then yes, right. Yeah. So, oh, you're right. So, and then there's yeah, there's the case. That's right. So it's fifteen, not sixteen. Yeah. So yeah. Um, right. And so a lot of that is also altered, as Brett was saying, by you know the race that you pick for um, you know going into it. They always come with a racial bonus. Um, right. And there's some some neat little ways you can tweak some of that stuff with Tasha's. We'll go over at the end, but. Uh, but yeah, so that that dictates a lot of, um, you know, the power you have to to bump up these stats from standard array. Because you'll notice, even though rolling three d six, the highest thing you can get is an eighteen. Mm -hmm. Eighteen is not one of these things in the standard array. It keeps it very balanced and very simple, and you can get up to seventeen if you um, play your. Uh, uh, race stats right so yes um, you are making a character Brett why don't you tell us about I it I did I did so so the basis of my character was kind of a intelligence base character I did use Natasha's rule because I just flipped around the two and the one wherever the heck I wanted to put it um, and in making my character I put um, as a uh, uh, arcane trickster that's the way I'm going to go with him kind of like an investigator kind of um, uh, rogue um, I did eight at strength. Mm -hmm. That's my dump stat. Um, Fifteen on dexterity with a plus one, plus one racial bonus. Um, uh, to so it makes it sixteen. So I get a plus three there. And my constitution. I always consider constitution always trying to be like my third best stat. Mm -hmm. uh, always. Um, little secret. Don't tell Rob. He's the one that kind of taught me that. So that's just kind of what I always. <laughs> I thought that sounded and, familiar. The book taught yeah. me that. And I've told everyone that's optimal because the book told me that. And, you know, you guys will slowly learn that I watch videos. I don't read books. <laughs> I do listen to books online, uh, audiobooks. Um, and so Constitution, I put it my third best at Intelligence. I put it 14, but I flipped the stats just to be dumb because of Tasha's <laughs> thing. Um, to her. So that's actually also at 16. So I have a plus three at Dexterity and a plus three at Intelligence. And then because I'm going like an investigator detective guy. Um, I wish I didn't have charisma at 10, but I do have that at 10, so where I give a little bit more a bonus to perception, 
with uh, wisdom, so I at least have a plus one to wisdom, so where I have some sort of bonus with like perception checks and um, uh, whatever. I mean, really, that's the main reason why I did it was for perception. Um, what are the, what other stats are with per, were perception or with wisdom? Uh, nat- no, nature's intelligence. Ah, uh, uh, yes, I believe it is. Hold on. Oh, I would have <laughs> Doesn't matter. You Doesn't matter. The, the reason why I did it. It doesn't matter. It, the reason why I did it was for the perception just to get a pl- plus there because as being an investigator, investigation and perception are going to kind of go hand in hand. I want to have I make sure I have some sort of bonus. Okay. So that's what wound up happening. Um, so I get my basically plus three at dexterity, plus one on constitution, um, and intelligence uh, plus three, um, wisdom plus one, and zero on charisma. Um, just to... Kind of just to kind of start, you know. Um, obviously, at level four and at level eight, you know, possibly the building up of getting a feat or getting the ability scores. We'll see how the player goes. You know, a lot of times I kind of go with the ability scores, but you know, if I can get a half feat somewhere, that helps. Um, maybe I might do that, especially with like constitution. How is that like thirteen? But or not? I don't know. All right. Rob, do you have a uh, you have your guy ready? I am. I'm I'm making him as we speak. Again, thanks to the miracle that is D and D Beyond and having this at our fingertips. So. This used to take hours. Yes. The first character I made with Rob was on paper, and it was like it was legit two hours. I was like, yeah. hey, go and make the character, and then we'll play next time. I, yeah. I used to have this, um, and I still do to an extent, but I just it's just too time consuming. I had this this um, uh, uh, mantra that. That you had to make a character on a piece of paper with a character sheet at least once, especially for your first character, so that you apply all the stuff to these little squares, the, the blank spots, so you know where everything goes, and then you you could even learn the game without even having to read the book. Now people yes. have the stats given to them, and they're like, I think there's something wrong with my character sheet because I'm not getting a bonus to my damage equal to my proficiency bonus, but I get it to my attack bonus. And they're like, you didn't read the book. You didn't know that that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> so, uh, therefore, uh, you're wrong. So, um, uh, the yeah. um, now Who's the your character? character I'm making, I'm making an Aarakocra artificer, right? Okay. So I'm thinking like this sort of also intelligence base. Yes. So exactly. Uh, that's by coincidence. So uh, I'm thinking of it as sort of like this bombardier like assault character you know with um you know he just makes like you know he's got a gun and and all sorts of so so and he's death from above you know so uh obviously i'm gonna put the highest one in intelligence mm-hmm. and uh let's see here so i i didn't do anything special with his i, I just got his, his base one so he gets the plus two to dexterity uh for being an right. air and then also a plus one to wisdom so intelligence fifteen. I don't really think about it. I don't worry about it too much. Really, that's that's kind of. I, I hope that's not going to be too too big of a theme today. Is that uh, I've lately gotten into the the theory that you're not supposed to worry too much about the stats. As long as you don't have terrible stats, you're really golden. So so don't yeah. don't worry about it too much. You're still gonna have fun. And you're still gonna be viable as long as you at least have a good stat in. The stats you don't have to optimize your your top stats that you can do that later with your ability score increases and things like that to get where you want to go so uh 15 intelligence uh wisdom ow i like to give the i do like to think about this wisdom i get the plus one so i'd like to put an odd number there so it right. pumps it up just it makes it worth it so i've got 13 there i want him to be like you know he's air coker he's like you know Examining the landscape and stuff. Sure. Um, he's uh, yeah. So I guess now we gotta. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up. I'm not gonna put the third best stat into Constitution. I'm gonna put it into Dexterity. So you did. What are your two best stats? So now the two best stats are Intelligence 15, Dexterity 16, because he he's while Intelligence it fuels a lot of his Artificer stuff. Yeah. In this case, Dexterity. Um, is going to be his main form of attack. Um, right. He's going to use firearms. Uh, yeah. Pro- wisdom. Probably can s- I could see you going that route as well, like like a bard, mm-hmm. possibly like a bard of valor, if you decide you want to play that way, and possibly putting your dexterity up high because you, you your specialty in a longbow. 
mm. you know, uh, with there. So I could see where it's like, even though you are a spellcaster, you might actually still have your dexterity high. I could see that also happening right. in other yeah. places. Yeah. And um, I like to, for an artificer or a character that's going to carry a lot of items, I like to not put strength as the dump stat, even though I'm going a dex based get build. Because even though I know most DMs don't worry about. Your carry capacity. Encumber, to, yeah, encumber. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll you know. at least put a 10 in, in strength. Uh, so it's not terrible. It's not an 8. Uh, I'm going to put my 8 into uh, Charisma as my charisma. Dump, my, my so-called dump stat of the, the yeah. uh, standard array. And Constitution, yeah. I'll give it 12. Nice plus 1 bonus. Um, and I'm going to be a ranged attacker, so I don't worry too much about that. Um, and, uh, yeah. That is my character. So I got in order yeah. of strength, strength 10, dexterity 16, constitution 12, intelligence 15, uh, wisdom 14, and charisma 8. That's after all of the racial bonuses. So all in all, pretty good. Pretty good build. Yeah. 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 You you have, what's your two highest? Uh, again, that's, uh, okay, so after the racial what bonuses. What numbers? Uh, yeah. 16 for dexterity because I got the plus two uh, yeah. bonus for racial. Uh, and then intelligence 15. Okay. All right. And I got a sixteen, sixteen. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, we were kind of similar, weren't we? <laughs> yeah. No, that's all right. I mean, it's fine. Um, all right. Let's let's go up and do. Let's do. What's the next thing? Uh, the next thing would be manual. So I will write mine down. Well, manual in in D and D Beyond implies rolled. Uh, so this is the good old classic yes. rolling stats, which yep. in and of itself even has like subcategories of what you mean when you say rolling the stats yeah so talking about rolling stats <laughs> i've done it multiple ways and i i'm such a gracious person and i'll even talk about this the times that i have people roll their stats i i don't fully regret what i did but i wanted to learn what i did to where if i decide i'm going to be a dm that takes a pre-made campaign and I'm gonna have them roll their stats, and if I'm gonna be gracious with how I'm gonna have them roll their stats, um, I need to adjust. I need to adjust the campaign. Um, I'll probably have to level it up. I'll have to make it a touch harder. I'll have to make things more difficult all at, right out the get-go. Um, because I noticed when I had them roll, it was, it was fun, it was good, we did enjoy it. They were succeeding at everything. Um, <laughs> Because the way I had them roll, I just felt so bad giving them low scores, and I wanted them to roll <laughs> high. And, and but yet I wanted it to balance out too, to where like if they rolled really high, then I wasn't really that gracious because I already rolled high, roughly. Um, but if they rolled really low, I would let them basically um, make an, an extra dump stat, but then I would give them like an automatic you know, 16 or 17 stat, you know, wherever. So like, like if they never got to 16 or 17. So they, they at least had one specialty at the table. Mm -hmm. You know, they could actually be somewhat useful, especially if like a bunch of other people are rolling high. It's like, this guy just sucks at everything. He's not gonna do anything now. Um, so I, I, I don't regret doing it. I, I wish I would have actually adjusted the campaign to just being harder from the get-go then. So if you don't do, uh, if you are a gracious DM, again, with even with rolls, because what I, this is, this is the, the uh, way I did it, was if they rolled a one on a D4 or on a D6, they got to just re-roll it. I, I, that, that's pretty much what I did. So whenever you, you know, you rolled, um, I think I Whenever they that. rolled, it was one of the yeah. one shots. Yeah, they rolled four dice, and if they ro anytime they rolled a one, they got to re-roll it. Um, <laughs> you know, and it it didn't make heresy. It made, well, no, what it did was it. I think it it made it made one of the characters really strong. Everybody else, no kidding. <laughs> Who would have thought that would be the result? Well, but everybody else was okay. Like, yeah. I think roughly it, st it didn't break too much past like the twenty-seven that um, uh, that the point buy gives you. Um, right. And and there was even one person that I did have to go, like they were still short after giving them, um, after even giving like letting them like basically change out, uh, like a, like make an extra dump stat and giving them a sixteen or seventeen. Um, 
So I say all that, I will roll. Rob, what way would you want to go? Do you want to go where we roll seven times and we get rid of well, the, the least number? Let's. What if we just go by the way the book says to do it? And that that's is dumb. <laughs> well, if we're just gonna show people how it's done. Let's that's show true. Them. That's true. Uh, that one we can all imagine is going to be very much in favor of the players, but yeah. there, this is there's a lot of debate. Point by which we'll go over next versus um, uh, rolling, uh, and which one is better. Rolling, you kind of get stuck with your character. So, by, first of all, before I get too much into that, uh, it's four d six rolled six yeah. times, and you drop the lowest die each time of each one you roll. Right. Um, so you're always going to end up with the top three. Unless you like having a like you, you had all good stats and you want one bad stat or something like maybe you would you drop one you know just do that in role playing yeah you know, just play dumb as a you know play a dumb character yeah you got to get like a twelve intelligence but oh ooh, me dumb <laughs> right all right hold on I gotta pull my dice out oh, oh. oh actually uh, um yeah. I, I will say though, my theory on the rolling and being more gracious, mm -hmm. I wanted people to pick more feats. I feel like it was like I always had a problem of picking a feat at level four or level eight when I wanted to make my stats higher. And if I want to make my stats higher, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna pick a feat. Like I don't care what kind of creative fun feats they are. I'm like, eh. The, the little, I, I could, the little always, known secret. Getting an ability score bonus is in and of itself a feat getting a plus two bonus to a skill i mean that increases so many things it is uh, yeah it is basically a feat increase your dexterity your ac goes up so don't think it's of it so much as picking between getting an ability score or feat i like to think of it as do you want to pick the feat that increases your ability score by two or pick a different feat which sometimes increases it by one tomato tomato rob right it's yeah. still the same thing i'm still gonna have the same dilemma <laughs> yes yeah i get it when, yeah, you yeah. know yeah um yeah. so four d6 Roll d six six times. So, yeah, do we are we gonna do this at the same time? That's pretty dramatic. Uh, I mean, we can if Let's we do, do it, it at the same time. Yeah, this would also save up time, save time too. Grabbing a pencil. There we go. You could always say it to me too, and I could tell you your numbers. All right, there's my first roll. I have uh, I rolled a ten. I rolled a five and a one, two, and a three. So I'll drop the one, right. and so I get a five. All right, or I'm I get rolling. a ten. Oh, I dropped the one. I got a six, a four, and a three. Thirteen. 13. Okay, I'll also write down your score. All right, next roll. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I rolled a bunch of ones in a in a five <laughs> and a three at five and a three. Okay. I got a so five, I, a three, and a one, so that's a nine. I also got a nine. All right, here we go. Going again. All fours. Oh. I got a twelve. What'd you get? 16. I got a, a 6, a 6, and a 4 after nice. dropping my 3. Nice. Okay. All right, here's here's one of my top ones. I got a, I got a 14, a 6, 5, and a 3. Drop the 1. I got a 6, a 5, and a 3. You also got a 14? <laughs> it sounded like the exact same numbers. That's, yeah. That's getting creepy. You're rolling. You're well. You're rolling. It's like a butterfly me. effect. The ripples from your dice are causing my dice to imitate the roll somehow. I just got a fifteen. I rolled a, a six, five, and a four. Oh. I got a four, a two, and a two. So that's an eight. <laughs> oh no! Two, two, two low stats. Yeah, yeah. Okay, last roll. Oh, your piece keeps falling out. Let's see. Oh no, Rob. Fourteen. I rolled a I rolled a four three and a two and I and a, I I rolled a one two three four dropping the one so I got a nine so I have two stats under ten uh, but I have a this so basically mine turned out like a, a standard array without basically replacing no thirteen and an, and two nines. But I got so I got 15 14 12 10 9 9. Yeah, so mine, mine came up similar, I think slightly better. So I have a 16 14 14 13 uh 9 8. Right, right. So and 
based off of our characters, you know, um, I'll be putting the 14 and the... Well, see, this is where you now you want to balance it out, right? With rolling it. Now you have the two dump stats. It's like, oh, do you want to have two dump stats now? Yeah, you know, I guess I, I would just... put one in strength, you know. Hope my, my DM does not calculate weight and that I can still fly as an air right. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know, strength and charisma. Or do I, or do I sacrifice you know, my constitution or my wisdom that I was going to do to bring up one of my nines, you know, um, like, do I, uh, put like the nine in one of my racial stats of some, right. for whatever reason, um, just so it's not so low. I don't think you have to. I mean, I wouldn't, if, even if I rolled this, like I wouldn't, but, um, but you can see both of us with a standard array got pretty close. You definitely rolled better than me with the 13, just having that extra 13 there. Ah, um, and you know what I'm gonna do is I can take my 14, put it in dexterity, bumps it up to a 16 still, and then put my yeah. 16 in intelligence. So now my, my where, where before I was sacrificing it down to 15, now it's a 16. So yeah. I got a 16, 16. Uh, yeah. And then what else do we got here? So. Wisdom. What did I say was my next best stat? Oh yeah, I think Constitution was fourth best because I was mixing right. it up. So I guess we'll go fourteen there too. So plus two bonus in there. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Still got my plus mm -hmm. one in Constitution and Strength, and then that's a nine, and then an eight and Charisma still. Similar to before, it is technically. Plus one better and uh -huh. intelligence and otherwise identical in the modifier. The modifier for any new players is the number that's attached to each of these. You'll see it in the player's handbook. Uh, it affects basically everything in the game. So uh, it is, uh, yeah, slightly better, which is what they say. Rolling versus uh, standard array will always be slightly better. Slightly better. For me, it wound up being not that Easily. case, really. And mine's slightly worse. Basically, oh. the because I, I, you know, I have a nine, um, one of being a nine, uh, a sixteen, so that's a plus three. Uh, constitution plus one at twelve. Uh, intelligence plus three. Wisdom I put at ten, so I didn't get that, you know. And then my charisma is at is at minus one. So it just kind of hurt my wisdom that I was going to do, you know, I didn't want to put constitution at 10 cause I don't think that's a good idea. Cause then you're just, you're super squishy. Um, so eh, it didn't work out great for me, but you know, that's just going to make it to where now, whenever I was thinking about maybe getting special feats, now I probably am just going to go with Rob's feats of just boosting up my right. ability scores. Uh, so, so here, here's what I think the takeaway is, and it's my, I guess this is more of my opinion. Yeah. I never use point. I, mean, I never use rolling ever. Yeah. Uh, because I overthink this way too much. I think, especially as a DM, I know when I say I mean if I'm a player and the DM says everybody rolls their stats, I'm down. I'll do it. Yeah, you did. But yeah, but um, when it comes to me being a DM, I always prefer to have them do point by because it. Um, and we'll go over that in a second briefly because we're actually about to hit 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, is that uh, rolling the dice, you have a chance of your player, let's say, oh, I don't know, hmm, that one of those 14s I rolled was a 10 or a 9 instead. Now I've got three bad stats. Um, sure, the DM might tell you you can roll again, but what if you get bad stats again? And That's somebody, what happened to me. Somebody else gets like... A 16, a 15, a 14, like just one thing's a 10 and everything else is above 11. Yeah. Like, and then it's a two year campaign where every week or every other week you're coming to the table and you know so and so's like dwarf or whatever is just this beast. They're okay. And you're, yeah. Your character's struggling. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it gets noticeable and it's like, okay, great. We're, we'll celebrate his success, but also. They had significantly better stats. Why are we celebrating? Mm, you know, shouldn't not, we be celebrating me and my mind? You know, it, it gets it makes a division in the party where there was never any balance at the beginning, and so there's like almost like a 
you know, it. Not to bring Critical Role up again, Rob, but I always will. They rolled their stats. I know. Yeah. Um, and it was okay. It never really got crazy noticeable. I really, by the, by the end of it, like, you can, every once in a while, every few episodes, you heard a comment like, oh, man, you, you need to bring that up. You know, I think I think not is like was relatively low. You know, uh, she she had or he Sam Regal's character like had some low stats, um, uh, but still specialized in area. Like he rolled well enough, uh, but he had a consistent dump things. I I believe so. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it depends on the table. Like, if we're all solid role players, and, like, what you said, like, you know, as long as, the, and, like, with me, how, like, I was, again, pro probably too gracious or needed to change my campaign, like, adjust it. If I was going to adjust it, it's kind of on the characters, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so so let's, let's say the quiet character actually rolled, let's say the guy that's kind of roughly brand new or kind of doesn't really come out of his shell too often. What if he rolled the highest rolls? And then you have your a, a character that's always or a, or a player that's always have been there, and then they actually rolled really low, and then it's like now you're gonna have this dynamic of like, well, this guy's always like the experienced D and D player, but the other guy is actually gonna be able to step up a little bit now and like even be a little more confident. Like actually, I'm kind of the guy, uh, I, in in some cases. That I'm not saying that. Don't know like, why it happens this way. But for some reason, in my observation, um, it has always been the opposite. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know. <laughs> I don't know why it always happens. It's like the guy who's been playing D&D forever is like, look at that sweet build I got. I'm going to find know exactly what I'm going to make with it. But then you got the new guys like, I, I just had, I had fun. I wanted to make sure, you know, my ranger had high charisma because he likes yeah. people. Yeah. And it's like, that's not, it's not going to work well with you, man. Yeah. And he didn't have good stats to begin with because he didn't roll right. very well. And it's like, it's right. not skill, but that's what he ended up with. But hey, know, if they he role play watch, it well, it could be great. Yeah. Now he has to watch the other guy like succeed at everything yeah. he tries and do better at his own stuff because his fighter can track better than his ranger or whatever, you know. <laughs> I think that's, that's a good idea. Basically how you said, just having new people do you know standard so it's like yeah. it's all the same advantage the um, reason i say i i actually like standard array better for new players versus point by which mm -hmm. point by is my favorite but it's really complicated for new players unless they have dnd beyond and right and i guess yeah so it's probably better for new players because they they don't have to do the math there's a lot of complicated math when you get over a certain score adding or subtracting from from the base amounts everything is eight and you you add you dump points into it it would balance you would be able to buy the standard array um with point buy is the idea but you could take right. away from like a, a a 14 and bump up one of your stats you know um i think the the cap is the i think the cap is still uh, 15. 15 isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so cap is still 15 you really still got to play with the race stuff and um it's uh too complicated to even go over in the video really but you know it, it, you don't even have to do the math anymore so it's not even really that big of a deal whether you're new or not you can uh, if you're using dd beyond or or any other uh calculator for it that there's many of them online uh you can just make your character and just it's like Minus three points would get you an 11. Minus five would get you a 13. Minus nine points would get you a 15. You start with 27 points. You get the idea. It's something basically like that where you're buying your stats. So the more you get, you take from one, the more you give to another. You can balance it all out across the board. And yep. you can really bland average character. Or you can tweak it from there. You know, I, li I like to bump everything up to 10 and then tweak it and then remove one or two things down below 10. Uh, I, I pretty much created the same exact thing for standard array that I did exactly. here. Except for except for in constitution, I just kept it at 12 rather than 13. Um, and then that that gave me another plus one to charisma. Like, oh, not plus one, it, I just got to 11. So maybe, maybe th this is where you might want to think about because you have the customization of point by, you might then want to think from here, all right, what feat you might have because some feats are half feet or, you know, they have give you half an ability score. What is it called? Half feet? No. Is it a half feat? I think that's what they call them, where it gives like a plus one to something and it get, does something. 
and they don't really have an official term, but that there are a lot of feats that don't quite provide as cool of a bonus, but they still give you a plus one give in something. A plus one in something. So, you yeah. know, you could look ahead. Um, maybe you do that in your your specialty, or maybe mm. you do still do something in, like, Constitution, where so if I bump my Constitution up to 13, um, then it goes to, uh, you know, then I'll go up to 14 with, with a half feet if I like it. So a little bit more planning can go with point by to optimize it if you want to do some of those half feats, or don't and just go with the full on ability bumps. I mean, you kind of, I mean, if you play a long campaign, be prepared to change, like have a solid idea. And then, you know, things might come up to where you might just go, you know what, actually I think I'm going to adjust and change. So, um, man, I really hope this helped. Rob, do you think we got our point across? I think so. I did promise we'd talk about Tasha's, but it's really not that complicated. You can. It, there's just a rule where you can swap out your ability scores. So yeah. all that stuff we were talking about with with races and making sure that they're in the right stuff, I right. could take my dexterity one and put it in intelligence if I really wanted to be a stickler about making sure intelligence was my highest stat. Yeah, um, I like to yeah. go with it. So I feel like there's a consistency to the 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 storytelling of the world and the way it's presented and all the you know the the, the skills and differences between the different uh, species and races of the world. But you have the option of having your air coker be raised by orcs and speak orc and stuff like that and swapping out right. some some role yeah. playing stuff and even ability scores to be more customized to what you like so uh, don't feel locked in by the race and class and all that when you're picking your scores I guess that's pretty much the only other thing sounds good kind of helps you customize and here's the thing Tasha's it's there to kind of go listen let's let everybody be every what if we had a goliath door something just honked was that my was that in my house that was at your house that wasn't my house okay <laughs> the horn just went off anyways tasha's cauldron and everything kind of just helps people be whatever they roughly want to be you know like a smart goliath you know or whatever else right. um all right guys this was fun thank you and uh yeah we'll see you guys on the next one hopefully you learned something yep see ya